In this video, we are exploring critical path method. The critical path method helps us in arranging the activities based on their dependency and visualization of those activities so that we can identify when the overall work is going to finish. In a project, we may do many things and many things can be done parallelly, but some of the things cannot be done parallelly, they are dependent on some other activities. Now, it might be difficult to manage just list of activities and keeping everything in mind that this can be done parallelly and this cannot be done parallelly and you may want to have some mechanism so that you can arrange activities based on their dependencies on each other and find out the overall duration of the project. The critical path method helps us in doing it. The critical path method arranges the activities as per their relationship. So in this particular case, we are picking up four activities, A, B, C, D, and I'm picking this example from BIMBO Guide 6th edition itself, and the arrows are showing their relationship. All these relationships are finished to start relationships, so we are not mentioning them explicitly. If you have non-FS relationship, then you will definitely see them mentioned on the path. So activity A is of a 5 days, activity B is of a 10, 5 days, and activity D is of a 15 days, and activity C is of 10 days. So activity B and C can happen in parallel. So this is a, this is a requirement which we are aware. Now you see multiple boxes here. So we are using a convention. So we write the activity name in the between. So this is like an activity name. This area we are using as a duration of that particular activity. We will calculate the early start and early finish. So early start we will write here and early finish we will write here. And we will also calculate something called late start and late finish. And there is something called total float which will get written here. So this is how we can see that the convention of, of these uh, uh, boxes are mentioned uh, here. So the goal of critical path method is figuring out what is the longest path or you can say when the earliest project can finish. Now you may get confused. One way I'm saying the longest path and another way I'm saying when the earliest project can finish. They both are same. Yes, because it is not a path of reaching somewhere. Many times, many test takers get confused that I have to go from one location to another location. There are multiple options to a path and I select a one path and I select the shortest path. The critical path is not equal to that. In a case of a critical path, the path which we are creating like this and this, everything needs to be done. It's not like that I will go from a shorter path and this will get dropped. This is just an arranging of your project activities and you need to do all the four activities. So when you have to do all the four activities, when the earliest you can finish. So in the sequence of activities, the, the, the longest one defines the overall project's earliest time. Now think of that you are five people going for dinner and you are figuring out how earliest we can leave from this restaurant. Now the earliest leaving time is a function of the slowest eating person. The person who takes maximum time to eat defines the earliest time your eating project can finish. So everybody is done but you are waiting for this guy and once this guy is done he says okay it's over and that is how we can see a critical path as well. The critical path is the longest path and that gives you the earliest duration by which your project can finish. Now let's see how do we calculate early start, early finish, late start and late finish by using a simple example here and what is called total float. Now this is the starting activity just after start you start A and the duration of activity is 5. So it makes sense to start this activity on day 1 and if it starts on day 1, it will take 5 days and it will finish on day 5. So as we have been calculating in the previous videos, the end time is start time plus 5 minus 1 just to take care of because we are working on the first day as well. So this takes 5 days. So it's starting on a day 1, taking 5 days. So 1 plus 5, 6 and I put a minus 1 because the, one, the first day also I am working. So it is starting on a day 1 and finishing on day Five. Now, you can see that activity B and C 
can start as soon as activity A get finished. The earliest they can start is as soon as activity B get finished because they are following finish to start relationship. I am saying earliest they can start. They may delay because of some reason but earliest they can start is on the day 6 because this one is finishing on day 5. And this way of calculating forwardly is called forward pass. So it's like in a forward pass using critical path method, we calculate early start and early finish. So this 5 makes this and this activity starting at earlier starting at 6. So when we get the early start, getting early finish is simple because early start plus duration minus 1 gives us early finish. So 6 plus 5 minus 1 give us 10. In a simple way you can see this activity was of 5 days so it finishes on day 5. This activity is again of a 5 day so 5 plus 5 it makes it 10, it finishes on 10. But when you have a lot of activities you may not want to put that much time and, and mind to it. You simply say start duration minus 1 gives me 10. Start duration minus 1 gives me 15 here. So because this was a 5 day, this was a 10 day and earliest activity C can finish is 15. Now the game comes in when the earliest activity D can start. Now this is a little bit tricky. See the earliest activity C can finish is 15. The earliest activity B can finish is 10. But as per this relationship, the D can only start when B and C both are finished. So when the earliest it can start? It can only start when both of them are finished. So we need to pick up the one which is getting finished later. Like the late person, the slowest person eating. So if you have a dependency on two person, maybe after that you want to do something, you need to wait for this guy. So the earliest D can start is after 15 means day 16. So you pick up the maximum. So in, in, a, in, a, in a technical way you can think of if I have a multiple dependencies, I pick up the one which has maximum end time, maximum finish time. So multiple dependency you pick the max and on that basis of plus one you decide the next duration. So this is how you can mathematically see it. So 10 on 15 which one is maximum, 15 is maximum, I start on 16. And this is over 15 days, so 16 plus 15 minus 1 makes it 30. So the earliest this project, the activity A, B, C, D project can finish is on day 30, that's it. Now there is also something called late start and late finish. Now you may wonder why do we need that? We already know that this project will take 30 days, that's it. Now there might be some flexibility in some activities and in order to identify do we have some flexibility in some activities and when I say flexibility means even if they get delayed by some days it doesn't affect someone else. Like the, the party example I took if there is a slowest person eating there could be other person who may go for a phone call while eating because he know the slowest person is going to take one hour even if you go for 15 minutes phone call nothing is getting going changed. So we need to calculate that float, that slackness and that slackness can only be calculated when we start calculating late start and late finish. When I say late start and late finish means keeping the project finishing on day 30 that is our first condition. We are not delaying the project finish date. It is remaining on day 30. How late this activity can start and how late this activity can finish. Now this is an activity D, the fast activity, last activity. It has to be same. Like it cannot get delayed. If this activity get delayed, day 30 get delayed. Simple. So this, this activity will have early start and early finish and late start and late finish same because it cannot if it finishes late, it, finish, it delays the project. So I can copy. I can copy the, the late finish to early finish. So early finish to late finish. And I can copy the late start to early start. So this is like I, I did that. Now there is a third point I sp spoke about. Slackness. Flexibility. If my late start and early uh, late finish and early finish has some difference 
that gives me a flexibility. So the earliest you can finish on day 30, the latest you can finish on day 30, ah, there is no flexibility because anyway I have to finish on day 30. So this makes me flexibility zero. So I am saying my float for this particular activity is zero because the late finish and early finish is same, the late start and early start is, is the same. Now let's come towards backward pass. We are done with the forward pass, we are coming backward. Now if this activity has to start latest by day 16, it cannot be get delayed by, by more than 16. These two activities must finish by day 15. The late finish for the previous activity is driven by the backward pass, the D. So we are coming back and we are saying that it must finish by day 16. Uh, uh, so it must latest get started by day 16. So the latest these two activity can finish is day 15. So we say that you must finish by day 15. Now we calculate if I have to finish by day 15, when can I late start? So again 15 minus 10 plus 1 gives me the reverse order and says that okay the latest I can start is day 6. So late start and late early start is same, late finish and early finish is same, slack float is 0 here. So total float is 0 because there is no flexibility. But here you have interesting stuff. Here. The early finish is day 10, but the late finish is 15. And it gives you a flexibility of 5 days. Means, if we have something, we can delay the activity by B by 5 days, still it will not impact the project. So we have a float there, and the float is the difference between these two. So 15 minus 10, we have a 5 days of, of float. And what is a late start? Late start is 15 minus 5 plus 1. So it can start latest by day 11. Now from 5 came, 5 is a duration. 15 is the latest by, by it should finish. So 15 minus 5 makes 10 and plus 1, so 11. So it, it, it can maximum start by day 11 and it can maximum get finished by day 15. And there will be no impact on the project. Now we take it back. We take it back and as we see that activity A is feeding or activity B and C are dependent on activity A. Now activity B can start up to day 11, activity C can start up to day 6, the latest it can start by day 6 only. So the latest this can finish is based on the minimum of these two, not no more maximum because it must finish by day 5 else this cannot start in day 6. So the latest activity A can finish is day 5 so that it can start on day 1 and flexibility is, is 0. Now, so which one is the critical path? The critical path is this one because this one is the longest path. This path duration is 5, 10, 15. This is the 30 path. So this is the longest path. The critical path also has less float or minimum float. Most of the network diagram it, it will you will see a zero float in a critical path but mathematically speaking there could be a situations where you may have a little bit float even on the critical path. But critical path is expected to have less float than any other path because that's why it is the longest path. There is no flexibility. This guy if the, the slow guy starts eating further slow the, everybody will get delayed. So, there is no flexibility to the slow guy. He must eat as per his speed only. If you delay further, we all get delayed. And that is what we see in a critical path. The total float or a float shows that there is a flexibility. Even that I can get delayed without impacting the, the project. Now, this was a simple example. You may practice a little bit more. Uh, we do have a lot of questions where such, such kind of paths are, are uh, given. We can discuss them in a forum whenever you get some queries related to these paths. In PMP exam, we don't expect very complicated path coming in. 
uh, they, you need more an understanding of these concepts rather than a lot of mathematical calculation. But yes, some level of numerical questions may come where you need to identify the critical path or when you need to identify which activity has a float or a slack or which activity has zero flexibility. So those kind of questions are expected to come in your PMP exam.